Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. Here we talk about the good, the bad, and the truth of the matter when it comes to EVs. And of course, we throw in some of our opinions sometimes. But something that I think is a shared opinion among us all is that stolen EV charging cables or vandalized EV chargers leads to headaches for all parties involved and probably isn't even worth it for those who do it. The pricing of EV charging cables ranges from like $300 to over $1,000, and they're not easily replaceable. On top of that, if the charger is one that you rely on and it's vandalized or stolen, you might be inconvenienced to totally out of luck in terms of getting your EV charged. I've got a guest on today's episode that you've seen on other podcasts who unfortunately was recently targeted when his at-home charger was vandalized and the cable was stolen. So let's plug in. This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. Okay, Kelly, thanks again for coming onto the podcast. It's great to have you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so you've been calling it gone in 40 seconds, right? Let's talk talk more about yeah. that. Happy yeah. To, so, to you. yeah, so last Monday morning, I got up uh, to get ready to go for my cancer treatments. And I walked outside and saw that my car wasn't plugged in. I'm like, oh, that's strange. I thought I left it plugged in. But the hood on my leaf was still open. It's like, well, okay. So I look at my charger and well, my cable's not plugged into the charger where it sits. So, well, that's weird. Where's the where's the handle? So I go to look at where the cable's going, and oh wait, there, there's no cable. It's like okay, well, I have a spare charger on the wall. Where let's look at oh that cable's gone too. So not just one cable, but two cables because I had a test charger installed and a, and my old reliable GE watt station that I've had on my wall for 13 years. Both cables oh. were gone. What a shame. I'm really sorry about that. That is really unfortunate to, yeah, wake up and totally your day is is different. So they were able to unattach it from your leaf and cut it. Did they cut it? Yeah. How did they take the cables? So they just, uh, they had a, um, a, a, a power operated power shears and they just went up to the base of the charging station and uh, um, it went zip, 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 and the cable was, was removed from the charging station, cut right off. And, oh. and then they came out, they went to the second charger and got ready to, to uh, cut those. And they unplugged the cable first so that they made sure there was no power in the, in the cable. And then zip, 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 and, and then off they went. Wow, what a, a bummer! <laughs> yeah, well, they from the time they got onto my driveway to the time that they left the driveway was about forty seconds, and so that's why I was calling it "gone in forty seconds." And uh, there's lots of talk about well, what people would want to do, like having an alarm on the charger so that if the cable was cut, that lights and sirens would start to go off. And I'm like, by the time they cut the cable, you have ten seconds, like. If I was sleeping and at 3 a.m., which is when this happened, you know, I hear the alarm going off and I'd look out my window just to see them running away and driving away. So before I could get out the house, I couldn't do anything to if the alarm was going off. No, it's it's definitely out of your hands at that point. Someone is running up your driveway. And if you're tuning in on YouTube, you can actually see Kelly's, it's like your doorbell video or your security cameras, whatever it is. You can see the folks come up, unplug it from your leaf, which is smart. I mean, they know about what they're stealing. They're making sure it's yeah. not pumping through with electricity and then they take it. So you did catch it on camera, but yeah, I mean, these are quiet and they steal quickly. Of, of course, you're not going to be able to get really, you know, at 3 a.m., you're asleep. It's You're kind of out of luck. And we'll go into some more details about what we think could maybe prevent this. It does seem to be like it's it it's just kind of a 
an opportunity for thieves for sure, but how big of a problem is it? So I did want to give folks some context as well. So charging cables for electric vehicles typically use copper as the conductor material, as the whole purpose is to have a the wonderful ability to transfer electricity efficiently. So this applies not only to the DC fast charging stations that we all know and love, but also the home chargers or the electric vehicle supply equipment, EVSE, specifically that allows you to power up your electric vehicle at home or at an outlet, wherever you plug it in. And copper is a high value material that is both limited in supply and easy to recycle. But unfortunately, the fact that copper is seen as valuable in a limited material, this means that charging cables have become uh, a target for theft. Today's copper market price is around $4.68 and US dollars per pound. What I was looking up and there may be, and let me know if you know exactly Kelly, but like two to three pounds of copper in a typical cable. So that means these thieves are getting maybe 10 to $15 per cable. Is that yeah, Does that sound about right? Sounds about right. I mean, oh, come on. It's not even like you totally, of course, they're not thinking about anyone else, thieves. And, you know, this isn't really a philosophy podcast, but that does not seem worth it to me unless you're hitting every, I mean, every charger in the city, right? It just seems like a little bit of um, not that not that valuable. But despite this, uh, Inside EVs reported that since the start of 2024, there have been hundreds of home chargers and DC fast chargers that have been targeted by scalpers or vandals. And in Fresno, California, they said 50 of the 88 installed charging units installed in the city have been vandalized in some form. So different ways, of course, that you can vandalize it. And it does seem to be that it's especially been a problem for cities that have installed you know, the, the public chargers, because they kind of seem to just be more rife with opportunity for theft because they're sitting in some public area. But of course, this was in your driveway, your home charger, your EVSE mounted on the outside of your house or, you know, someone's apartment for easy, easy charging access. So they not only got you once, but twice. And I'd love to talk a little bit more about you know, this is really hard to stop. It doesn't seem like it's super valuable, but there, it, it does seem to be a problem. What, I mean, were your first thoughts when this happened, kind of what went through your head? I mean, besides like, oh, this really sucks. Um, at first, before I saw the video, I was like, okay, well, some guys were riding along through the neighborhood on bikes and had a pair of side cutters and, and they got off their bike and Cut the, cut the wires and then rode off. And it wasn't until after when I saw my video surveillance that, oh, it's much more sophisticated than, than what I was thinking it was going to be. And it's people that were driving through the neighborhood very slowly, looking at every house um, along the way. And once they drove by my house and saw the lights on my EV charger, because, of course, the EV charger has nice ri a ring light to, to let you know where it is and, and that there's power on. They stopped, backed up, took a good look at it to know that, yes, that's what they were looking for. And then they pulled forward into my neighbor, into the front of my neighbor's truck and then got out and came in and stole it. So I was I was shocked that it was as and, and that they had power tools. That was the other thing is I was I wasn't expecting them to have power tools. Which everyone that looked at it was like, yeah, those are about five hundred dollars. Usually, if you have one of those, you're an electrician or something, and and you use it for your trade. So that was that was interesting. That is interesting. Yeah, uh, to have that tool, either you know, who knows? Maybe they stole that as well. But it, like you said, you know, they unplugged it from your leaf before they stole it. So there is some knowledge here, but I guess if you're a good thief, you're definitely studying what you're taking. Still $500 for that kind of tool versus maybe 10 bucks for a cable, maybe 20 since they hit you twice. Still doesn't yeah. seem to add up for me, but you did mention something about these lights. So perhaps it was more visible. Can you tell me a little bit more about your neighborhood situation? Because are you the only one who drives electric in your neighborhood? How common is it where you live to charge no, also well, at home? So, 
I, I got my car 13 years ago and I installed my charger on the front of my house in a very noticeable location. It looked very nice. And anyone who came over with an electric car, the cable was long enough to reach their car or my car, which would park in the driveway. And so that was always very handy. But I was the only one in the neighborhood that had an electric car. So I never worried about someone kind of hunting for EV charging stations because obviously it would it wouldn't be worth their while trying to go through you know hundreds of blocks looking for a charging station and have no luck so uh but recently uh i did a survey in my neighborhood counting the number of evs and we're up to about 15 electric cars in my subdivision which only has two ways um in and out so one on each end of the subdivision and so most of them are teslas but there's a wide variety of uh, other electric cars, including Chevy Bolts and um, like Toyota BZ4X and and whatever else. But yeah, there's about 15 people in the neighborhood. Um, I have two neighbors that have uh, Teslas, and they also had their cars plugged in overnight in their driveway. But they were using the Tesla wall adapter, and so those were very um, inconspicuous because they were mounted on plugged in on the side of their house and and the cable wasn't really visible at 3 a.m nothing lit up for people to see interesting that definitely i feel like could be a part of it tesla does kind of have even with their uh their superchargers their fast chargers a bit of a subtle thing of course they're like white and red but there's not a lot of lights um there's no screens on them so i wonder if that's that's definitely part of it and also I mean, what do you think about the Tesla Sentry mode? Do you think that these knowledgeable thefts would have any idea about that? I mean, you have a camera on your front door. Do you think yeah. that would play in? Um, I, I'm not sure if they were thinking about the Tesla Sentry modes. Um, uh, I definitely went around to my Tesla neighbors to see what they had. And the people that had their cars in the driveway, a couple of them had Sentry mode on, but they only got a a shot of the side of the cars. There's a couple Teslas up the street that park on the street. And I was really hoping that they had sentry mode because they would have caught the license plate as the person drove up and drove by. But they had turned off their sentry mode because of power uh, consumption uh, concerns. So that was very unfortunate. Yes, that, that tends to be the case, right? You know, you turn it off and that's that's when you need the recording, but there's the, the give and take there. So why are, the, I mean, thieving these cables, like we said, does not necessarily net the criminal a lot of money and it's it's easier than it should be, but it's a little bit difficult to sell stolen goods and also to like get that copper extracted. So do you think there's any other motivation than just financial? Um. Drug addiction is the primary reason that they do it. Um, and yeah, the, the motivation is it's really strange because of, you know, all they're concerned about is getting more drugs. And you say if there's, say there's $20 worth of copper in each cable, but then they have to strip the, 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 um, the rubber uh, shielding off of it. And then there's the installation on every, every wire that they'll usually just burn off in a, put it into a fire and burn off the uh, plastic uh, and then they'll take it down to the metal recyclers and there's nothing at that point to make it any more suspicious than any other copper that's being sold. Mm. So uh, we talked about some, do you have specific ideas of the EVSE designs that could be better? Of course, there's the Tesla wall box that seemed to not be hit, but any others and maybe that you have in your garage, like what are you going to do now? How are you back to charging your leaf at home if you are yet? Yeah. Um, so I was using the lo level one charger that came with the leaf for a couple of days until I got around to disconnecting the, the two chargers off my wall. And I, I have several chargers in my garage. Uh, and so I've hooked one up temporarily and, and we'll bring it in at night when I'm not using it. Um, but my, my goal is I'm going to move my 240 volt outlet from the outside of my house to into, into my garage and mount it inside my garage near the garage door so I can take the cable underneath the garage door to still have almost the same reach. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the other option I was looking at was mounting the chargers on the side of my house, 
um, which are facing my neighbors instead of the street, and then blacking out any power lights and charging status lights so that the EV the EV charger is not noticeable at 3 a.m. as people drive by. Yeah, makes sense. Make it as incu- inconspicuous as possible, which is, I think, like a good lesson that folks can take away. And I also wonder, like, t- Tom Malogny tests a lot of at-home chargers with State of Charge. Check him out if you haven't. Friend of Out of Spec, for sure. He's on the Batteries Included podcast. But I wonder, um, I don't, I'm not really sure, but if he's talked about this as well, because... Yeah, when you first installed your charger, it was like you were one of the few. So yeah, of course, you're just going to put it outside your house. You're going to charge your leaf. No big deal. But now, as these grow, they're seen as something that is an opportunity to steal. And there's, it's kind of hard, aside from putting it inside your garage, to secure your charger. You can't really like chain up a charging cable or lock it. Like it, it doesn't really seem like there's a model for that. But one thing that we were briefly talking about earlier is the you know, bring your own cable model. Uh, And that's kind of more when we see on this curbside charging, that model specifically in Europe, it's bring your own cable, you pull up, there's the dispenser right there, but then you have your cable that you plug in into the dispenser and then into your car, and then you're able to charge. And when you're done, you take it, you put it away. It's electric is uh, a startup that is, uh, they're out of Brooklyn and they're uh, in a few places around the US right now. And we, I've interviewed one of the co-founders, Nathan King, and they're doing a similar model too, where you have the cable and then you take it away. And this kind of avoids this opportunity that can be come across by thieves. And we were talking about J3400. So how does this standard come into play with this kind of uh, removable cable? Sure. Model? So in, in Europe, the um, bring your own cable model would, would fit this build really well so that if if I wanted to leave my EV charger on the outside of my house facing the the driveway as it as it was, having a bring your own cable model would allow me to bring the cable in or put it in in my in the trunk of my car when I'm finished charging and not have to worry about the cable being left out and someone stealing it. And if someone were to steal the cable while it was plugged in, if I left the car plugged in overnight like I did uh, last Monday, then the cable would be stolen and you'd have to replace the cable, but you wouldn't have a repair bill of right now. Like the cost of the cable is $300 and having an electrician come to replace that cable is probably another $300 depending on your electrician. Yeah, that's a good point because it's it's hard you know it's hardwired into the EVSE versus this removable factor. You don't have to get a professional involved. You don't have yeah. to do all of that. So that is something that we can look forward to, kind of right. But uh, when will we start to see EVSEs that kind of have more of that that uh, setup? Do you know? So uh, we're we're looking at twenty twenty five. As, as the vehicles start rolling out with uh, J3400, all the cable manufacturers are trying to get their products certified right now with the J3400 um, ends on it. So, so, so that will be ready this year. And then next year, we'll see the EVSEs with, uh, with the J3400 connection on it. The EVSE okay. manufacturers in Europe won't have a problem with just putting the J3400 into their existing model because the North American made uh, chargers might take a little bit longer. Um, thinking like the Clipper Creeks, they would have to come up with a new design for their cases to to have the the connector built onto the front of the the case. Okay, yeah, makes sense. And yeah, twenty twenty five, we're hoping to see more of the J thirty four hundred really come into play. You know, also like being native in some EVs, we'll see. Fingers crossed. But also how it comes into play with this kind of thing, which I I don't think we've talked about much, is like the other impacts of this. And so with at home charging, you can do your best, I think, to avoid this. But unfortunately, you still might be hit. And then maybe we can briefly talk about the. DC fast charging. I know that you don't own a DC fast charger. As far as I know, maybe you do, but uh, these also can be vandalized. They also can be cut and perhaps they're larger cables. So they'll bring a little bit more money. The thefts, the thieves way, but how, 
I, I've seen like, you know, security cars sitting by a charger, like at a target, they'll have security that sits over by the chargers. And maybe that's a deterrent, more lighting. Uh, but otherwise, these also seem like they're pretty easy to target. Have you looked into this at all? Have you seen any efforts to prevent this on the public charging, fast charging side of things? I haven't haven't seen any good deterrence yet for the fast chargers. Um, uh, other than making sure the fast chargers are in a well lit area, um, visible from many different um, streets and, and offices, um, the ones I've seen that were hit mostly are in a quieter area where they people could pull in and and mess around with the chargers for several minutes, and no one would notice that there was a vehicle there. That. Makes sense. Yeah, it kind of, it does seem like we don't have tons of systems to keep this from happening because it's a bit of a hard problem. Because are you going to have just alarms that are set off if you, yeah. <laughs> if, if someone's creeping up? I do have one solution I'm going to bring to some of the cable manufacturers. Okay. To install as an option to the cables being a an Apple AirTag or... Um, as, you know, it might be a hundred dollar option to add onto that cable, and then uh, it won't stop the first one from being stolen. But as as it's pinging from wherever the people are taking apart the cables, the police will be able to track them down and and catch them. Uh, and then once people get an understanding that some of these cables, or they think that all of these cables have the air tags in it then they will think twice about whether or not they want to to be holding on to this, this stuff. Definitely more consequences for this. And uh, framing it from what we're seeing is that EV charging is critical infrastructure. Perhaps we should have some cr you know, critically intense ways of getting, basically punishing this and deterring it from happening. It is a tough one. I would be interested to see in how like that would be implemented and if, because, yeah, the thieves aren't getting a lot for it, but it is expensive and a headache to replace these cables. So how much does our society, do the manufacturers, do the charge point operators value not having to deal with that problem? Is the problem big enough at this point? I'd love to, well, I'd hate to know that our any of our listeners have been affected like you have, Kelly, but I, I would be interesting to see. I haven't seen many comments where folks have been like, hey, Francie, out of spec, this happened to me. Of course, this happened to you. And hopefully it doesn't continue happening. Hopefully it's just not of value to people because we already have enough to deal with with EV charging. We don't need them cut and stolen from us. And, and so it doesn't, it, is this the first time this has happened to anyone you know or your neighborhood, Kelly? Yeah, so this is the first time I've ever heard of a, of a private residential charger being vandalized like the um, commercial uh, parking lot kind of level two chargers. We're, we're very familiar with seeing those being cut um, overnight, but I was totally shocked. And I was like, I was, I was like the first guy that this has ever happened to in their own driveway. We have seen obviously <laughs> level one chargers that were just plugged in and someone comes along and will unplug it and, and take off with it. But first time of anyone cutting cables off of a level two bolted to the wall. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit uh, brash and a bit unsettling. Never like someone getting that close to your home and doing something that is, is really not cool. So, you have, you know, had to pivot. Have you talked to the electrician yet? Had them come out? Not yet. Um, I have my own chargers, and I, I had people drop off old chargers for me to, to take the cables from that were still good. So. Good. I have enough parts to fix it. Good, good. You have the parts and the skills. So yeah. yeah, maybe we can check in on that, how that progress goes and good luck with it. Of course, be safe, be careful. And hopefully this does not happen again. Again, like I said, I don't, I hope it hasn't happened to anyone that's listening or watching, but if it has, let me know. I'd be interested to see if any of us have been affected. It does seem like this is happening, you know, to these public chargers a bit more than at home chargers, but either way, uh, I've been having people ask about this, like how big of a problem is it? it? It is a problem. The magnitude of it, I think, will continue to show itself as more people charge at home and more chargers come out into the field. And then 
what will the response be to protecting them? We'll have to see. I think you have some good ideas, Kelly. You know, the more inconspicuous, the better. Maybe it's the removable cables. That's not really possible for DC fast charging. So maybe it's lighting, security, some sort of tracker or some sort of alarm. Let us know in the comments what you think would be a good deterrent. I uh, would love to hear it. And thank you, Kelly, for coming on to share your unfortunate story. It's kind of interesting that you were hit because you've been on the podcast before. So you had an outlet right away to come and say, hey, this is this actually happened to me. But I am very sorry that that happened to you. I hate to hear it. Thanks, Francie. Yes. And thanks, everyone, for tuning into the Out of Spec podcast. We'll catch you next time on the next episode. Keep those at-home chargers safe, drive safe, have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.